Hi, this is The Truth of Love, and this is Clutch. Today's topic, hope. Now, before I get started, I did want to remind all of you that I am still doing coaching practices, but that may be coming to a close soon. Uh, I will keep you posted, but for the time being, coaching practices are still available. If you're interested, please be sure to book something on my website at www.thetruthoflove.net. With that being said, I wanted to talk about the topic in hand, which is hope what hope means, what it actually consists of, and why is it so potent in us human beings? Well, the initial aspect of hope is that it's essentially a construct that's meant to keep us alive. Initially, in the early stages of a breakup, we have this underlying motivation to rekindle with our ex. And it's through hope and through the perseverance of hope that we keep this motivation going. Because after all, uh, in times when we were in 50-person societies and hunter and gatherer groups, if we were ever separated from a group, it essentially meant death. And at some point, there was some level of separation in our ancestors that caused them to feel very helpless. And it happened so consistently that this element of hope came up, which motivated people to push themselves that much further. It's the same thing that we see in modern day society with people that tend to be workaholics, people that tend to push that go, go, go ambition, um, borderline <laughs> toxic positivity in some cases. But that's the underlying notion of why that emotion tends to exist. And initially, when we're going through a breakup, we're using that motivation of rekindleship as hope. But as time progresses, we start letting go of hope and start bringing in this element of understanding. We start understanding the flaws and the traumas that have happened to us. We start accepting ourselves for our insecurities and the things that happen to us. We start accepting ourselves for who we are, whether there is an issue with being overweight or whether or not there is an issue with security or trust. We start accepting ourselves for our actual selves, what we call the ego or the inner ego in, in some cases. And of course, um, whenever we are processing these emotions and we're analyzing what has happened to us, we are analyzing every single detail under a microscope. The main reason is we're trying to understand the why, and most importantly, we're using that underlying emotion of hope to um, essentially promote this ambition that we can possibly get back together with our exes. So we're very critical of ourselves, and most importantly, we're very specific on the levels of details. This is why um, whenever I have coaching sessions with some of you, I will let you guys take over the first half of the session and just tell me everything that's going on, because that level of detail and getting that level of detail out helps us in the aspect of a therapeutic sense. It's also a double-edged sword in the sense that if we spend too much time specializing on the details, we might miss certain things or certain elements that we're meant to learn and we're meant to grow from. Eventually, as we start accepting ourselves for what we are and our inner security, insecurities as well as our imperfections, we'll start focusing our attention towards our ex and we'll start accepting them for who they are. Are they a superficial person? Are they highly ambitious, highly workaholic, highly selfish? Um, these elements will slowly come to you as time progresses. And a lot of times, it will be funny to us to start seeing these small chinks in the armor in our ex, especially as enough time and space away from them has progressed, because we'll start noticing things that we didn't necessarily notice when we were wearing the rose-tinted glasses. And oftentimes, when we approach friends or family and ask for some feedback or some input on it, they'll chuckle and they'll say, well, it was kind of obvious that this person was superficial, or it was kind of obvious that this person was very selfish. But it's not something that we, in the moment, truly Truly analyzed, and this is why it's important to take that time and space away. But this other unforeseen consequence of hope is that it allows us to see the situation for what it is eventually, because we spent enough time obsessing over the problem and obsessing over the person that we start understanding where this person came from, or at the very least, we start understanding what kind of person this is. And that's the key indicator. Why is it that hope exists? Why is it that we don't see these imperfections in people and choose to ignore the red flags in people that we choose to bring into our lives. And yet, after we've been separated from that situation and then after enough time and space away from this person has progressed, we start seeing these things. Well, the main element of hope has to do, believe it or not, with projection. Because I have this underlying motivation 
to survive and replicate in my life. My goal is to find someone that can help take care of children, that will help me produce some offspring, and of course, live a healthy and secure life. At least that's the biological sense of things. We're choosing to ignore the psychological and emotional aspects of the equation, at least for now, but those are the underlying issues. Whenever we are dealing with a situation where we're dealing with someone who is imperfect, what ends up happening a lot of the times is that we'll be heavily critical of our partner or our partner will be heavily critical of us of things that spark underlying issues. So let's say I have a deep-rooted insecurity with my parent and being taken care of. What I might do is I might be extra critical of someone who comes along and I might essentially tell them, you're lacking ambition, which might be the furthest thing from the truth, especially when you look at the career development of the people that we tend to be with or even the people themselves. There might be some level of progression, 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 but that deep-rooted core wound or that high level of insecurity is being sparked from something. And usually that something is a deep-rooted issue within ourselves. Even something as extreme as superficialness, if I choose to be critical of someone who's superficial, that in an element is telling me that I have an element of myself that is superficial that I'm currently suppressing. And isn't that a bit of a paradox? Isn't that a bit of an ironic twist to what it is that we tend to be critical in others? Usually we're critical of the very things that we are suppressing in ourselves. And this is where the element of hope tends to come in and tends to incorporate itself into the aspects of every single relationship. We have to make the most of our circumstances. And that success is directly contributed to the work that's been given. So the best way that we can potentially get the most out of a situation is to be hopeful. I am hopeful that this relationship is going to work. I am hopeful that this person is going to be trustworthy, even though I have some contradictions along the way, even though my intuition is telling me red flag, red flag, red flag. It's funny how that works. But as we gain more experience and as we start learning to incorporate that intuitive thought into our process and start trusting our gut instinct, we will be less and less likely to be targeting individuals that spark core wounds in ourselves. Instead, what we will tend to do is we will tend to maximize our chances. After all, success, if anything, is a series of chances and circumstances that will eventually lead to a preferred outcome. Nothing you do in life is a guarantee. The idea of us pushing for success as if it's a for sure thing is completely and utter nonsense. Chance is the biggest factor we have here. We can definitely maximize our chances by doing repetitive action, by maximizing the potential of each action, by being prepared, by being a good standing, by being emotionally, physically, and psychologically in a good place. But it doesn't mean that it's going to lead to success. In fact, it's quite the exact opposite. Consistency is what leads to success. How many failures will you have to go through before you reach that next level? Every devil, for every level, there's another devil, as I've said in the past. Every time that you're challenged, every time that you have this problem or this conflict that causes you to question yourself, that causes you to disconstruct your belief structure, and more importantly, deconstruct the person that you happen to have been with, is another opportunity to make the lesson and do it right. This is what hope is. Hope is the understanding, or at the very least, the belief that I will do better if given enough opportunity. And this is why we push that extra mile. This is why we choose to wait for that X, even though intuitively we might not know that they're not the right person for us. The differences between how you interpret hope have to do with the differences in philosophy. I am hopeful that the hard work will eventually pay off in the long run. But in reality, there's no guarantee. I could do absolutely everything right in life and everything right in the relationship, and it could still mean disaster. Alternatively, I might not do anything right, and I might somehow still 
conclude in a successful outcome. Repetition definitely increases those odds, but it's not the main factor in the equation. The main factor in the equation is you. It's your hope. How hopeful are you that with enough time and space and practice, you are going to achieve what it is that you're going to achieve? Success, by no means, can be guaranteed by anyone, let alone a coach like myself. But there are some coaches out there who preach this rhetoric, who preach this way of thinking. I would know. I used to date one of them. But the idea is that repetition is not enough. Instead, understanding of one's limitations is going to be your best contributing factor to success. Do you know where your flaws lie? Do you know where your deep-rooted insecurities happen to be? That deep-rooted insecurity is what makes you who you are. You're not to be fearing it. You're not to be suppressing it. Instead, you should be accepting it and incorporating it as part of yourself. There's a notion that we often view ourselves in the eyes of others. This is why breakups are so painful. We imagine, we project the amount of pity and the amount of negative emotions attributed to ourselves through this person that we once loved. We cope with our actions like others judge us in the moment of pain. And yet, the very emotions that cause us this pain also provide this level of perspective. The very things that we have done and said to others are a blueprint in the way that we choose to judge not only ourselves, but choose to change our actions moving forward. This in turn causes us to reach out to people who've hurt us, who have essentially caused us a level of trauma in the past, or vice versa, in order to say, I understand you now. You caused me this trauma, or I caused you this trauma. And now that I, the world is reversed, and I'm feeling this pain firsthand, I want you to know that I am deeply and truly sorry. This is the notion of why exes tend to come back more than anything. Trauma. So hope is not an illusion, but rather an eventuality of prolonged pain and suffering. I know there's hope because I've been through a lot, and yet I'm still here. Your ex, and anyone who's ever betrayed you, is left with the moment of clarity when trauma is hit upon them. You think that they won't think about you. Bullshit. They do. And I'm sure they have and will continue to do so. The question is whether or not they will learn the lesson based on what it is they did to you. The whole notion of hope is that it's an uncertainty. I can't say for sure that this is the outcome, but what I can say is that I am hopeful. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, I would ask that you hit the thumbs up icon below. For those of you that haven't subscribed, I would highly recommend that you do. And of course, if you're interested in coaching practices, information regarding that can be found on my website at www.thetruthoflove.net. With that said, this is Clutch signing off.